Good morning, St. James. I hope this finds you well. Know that I miss you dearly, and uh, as these weeks uh, continue to go on, it gets harder and harder for us not to be able to come together, uh, at, at least for me, and I long for the time where we will be able to, uh, to come back together. But uh, please continue to let us know if you have any needs uh, or if there's anything going on in your life that, that we should be aware of, and uh, we'll continue to pray for each other and to support each other uh, the best that we are able. Uh, one of the ways that we can continue to connect is by uh, gathering for morning prayer. And we're very thankful for uh, the Timberlakes for hosting today and uh, for the Christians uh, who will be hosting again in, in, in a couple weeks. Uh, and uh, encourage you to, to consider participating in that. It is a way for us to connect and to, to worship together uh, in, uh, in a safe way. Uh, and we will keep you posted as uh, any information emerges about us being able to regather uh, uh, here at St. James. Uh, but know that, uh, that we are uh, in each other's hearts and, um, and would like to be uh, aware of any concerns that exist. Also, we are called, especially during this time, uh, to be uh, looking outwards, to be responding to the world. Uh, and as uh, everyone deals with the complexities of going back to school, uh, some have the added complexity of, uh, of financial need. And so we have committed uh, to uh, getting backpacks for many Fauquier students that need uh, a backpack and supplies. Uh, and I uh, would encourage you to read the weekly news to get all the details, uh, but to reach out to Jen Taylor uh, to get a, a, a backpack, uh, to get a name, and, um, and we will uh, have uh, a collection of backpacks filled with back-to-school supplies uh, to be distributed, uh, much like we did in, in, in such a, 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 an abundant way with the, the food gathering for the, the, the snowpacks. Uh, so thank you in advance for doing that, but I encourage you, please, please, please uh, reach out to Jen. I would love to see St. James uh, fulfill all of those backpacks that we, uh, that we committed to take on. So, uh, so with that, I invite you to begin our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and blessed, blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. everyone. We wish, wish you peace and, and patience in these, these trying, trying times. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we, who cannot exist without you, may by you be enabled to live according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, St. James. My name is Jeff Sable, and I am so happy to be with you this morning. It's uh, August and way too hot for the beard that I was sporting when I last read the prayers. It's truly amazing how life has changed. But what is wonderful, to me at least, is how well this church and this congregation has adapted, innovated, and created a new normal. And I am grateful for all that is good here. Let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, Ben and Ted, our clergy. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, especially for Donald, our President, the Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States. We pray also for those in law enforcement, for their safety, their morale, and that they may know the support and gratitude of the communities that they serve. We pray for those in the armed forces, their families, and all deployed in harm's way, especially Mark. I ask your prayers for all those who have suffered or feared discrimination, mistreatment, or violence because of their God-given identity. Help us to understand, to acknowledge our corporate responsibility, and guide us towards sustained healing, reconciliation, and unity. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, 
the oppressed, the lonely, the burdened, the anxious, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially for Keith, Karen, Judy, Helen, Carol, Bonnie, Omni, Christine, Steve, Judy, John, Joan, Kay, Ansel, Tina, Linda, Fred, Kay, Ed, Barbara, Anne, Merrily, Marie, and for those whom we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for all health care and emergency workers, those who continue to put themselves at an increased risk to provide essential services, and to those facing economic insecurity as a result of COVID-19. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find God and be found by God. I ask your prayers for St. James Episcopal Church and School, our Stephen ministers, and their care partners. I ask for your prayers for the departed, especially Steve Koch. Pray for those who have died, especially any who we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for the peace and unity of the Church of God for the faithful and growing relationship between First Baptist Church and St. James Episcopal Church. We give thanks for our many blessings, which we now name either silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have, faith, have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. From wherever we find ourselves, we offer our prayers to you, the God who promises to abide with us. During this time, may we know and trust your presence in our lives. Continue to bind us together. Embolden us as your church to be signs and agents of your hope, your healing, and your love. We pray this in the name of your Son, who came and dwelt among us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up by the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So Jesus finally gets what he so desperately needs, what brought him to this area in the first place. Uh, after uh, inviting the disciples to, to take their boat offshore and dismissing the masses, he goes up a mountain to be still. 
to have that quiet time with God, to grieve the loss of John. And as he comes back down and he goes to rejoin the disciples, he realizes their boat's been pushed much farther offshore. A storm has risen up uh, and he goes to them. He just walks to them on the water uh, and meets them in their peril and their fear. And they are even more terrified. And they say, who is that? What is that? And he says, it's me. And Peter says, if it's you, Jesus, then have me walk to you. And Jesus says, okay, come to me, Peter. And so Peter, fixated on Jesus, doesn't even think about it, gets out of the boat and starts walking towards Jesus. And he's doing it. He's walking on water. And then he realizes, I'm walking on water. And he looks all around him and he sees the storm. And he realizes this shouldn't be happening. All the things that could go wrong. And he starts to sink. And of course, Jesus doesn't let him sink. He pulls him up. Um, but this story resonates with me so easily. Uh, it's just such a beautiful metaphor for our journey of faith uh, that uh, as we follow Jesus, uh, if we have our, our minds and our, our, our conscience and our being uh, fixated on Jesus, we can walk through the storm uh, and Jesus will hold us up. I always, when I hear this, go back to my days as a ropes course uh, director, uh, uh, belaying and, and guiding uh, young campers uh, uh, across the ropes course obstacles, uh, which generally uh, uh, consisted of going up a, a telephone pole, essentially, with staples on it uh, for hands and, and feet, uh, and then going across a, a wire to the end of the obstacle and then jumping off. Um, and some children would, would, would climb up, and they'd all start about the same. Uh, there's, uh, there's the adrenaline uh, and the fact that you're low to the ground and you can feel the rope almost pulling you at the very beginning, uh, and you, you climb up. Uh, and as you get farther off the ground, your, your fear increases, uh, especially as you get to the top part of the, uh, the, the pole and you have to uh, enter the, the rest of the element. And some, that fear is quickly translated into adrenaline and, and they move forward. Uh, others, that, that fear can cripple them. Um, and what I found uh, is that if I pulled a little bit harder, because it was often uh, those that were crippled uh, by the fear that needed that affirmation, uh, that success. Uh, and so I would pull just a little bit harder on the rope so that they would feel it. So they know that they were tethered uh, to something that could hold. Like we are all tethered to something that we know will hold. But when we feel it, when we trust it, uh, we can keep moving on. Uh, and I uh, had that, uh, that incredible joy of being able to pull just a little bit harder, invisible to everyone else behind, all of the rest of the campers gathered, uh, and give that assurance uh, uh, to a young uh, girl or boy who's, who's uh, trying to accomplish something they didn't think possible as they work their way across the obstacle. Um, and it seemed like such a perfect parallel when we trust and know that we are tethered to God, uh, when we are fixated on God, uh, we can walk on water. We can walk through the storm. And as I set to preach that story that's resonated so clearly with me through the years today, I realized it's not as easy as that. One. And principally, it's not that easy to hear the voice of Jesus amidst the storm. We listen for it. But the storm is coming from all directions. And the storm uh, is tossing us aside uh, left and right. And where is the voice of Jesus guiding us? And I realized that one of the principal instruments for recalibrating. For focusing my life on Jesus and letting the storm take place around me but not guiding me is this church. And while we've uh, moved church online, while we've uh, uh, tried as we could to continue to be church, it hasn't been the same experience as coming together, acknowledging where we've gotten off course recalibrating our lives together and walking out and doing that week after week. 
as I thought about the way that this story struck me this year, this miracle story, I had to be honest. Am I like Peter? Fixated on Jesus, but distracted by the storm, by the news, uh, all of the events around me? Or am I fixated on the storm and periodically distracted by Jesus? Let me unwrap that a little bit. Am I tuning into the news to help guide my discipleship, to help see uh, where the, uh, uh, the, the, the boat has been cast in the, in, in the waves? Or am I fixated on all the things swirling around? Do I turn on the news to help inform my discipleship? Or do I turn on the news because I'm fixated by the news itself? It's hard. It's hard when we don't have that principal instrument of the church in the same way that we're used to. But I think the question that I keep coming back to again and again this year is what am I fixated on? Am I fixated on the storm and distracted by Jesus? Or am I fixated on Jesus and distracted by the storm? Now, I do think it's important for us as the church, for us as Christians, as followers of Jesus, to pay close attention to the storm. To be God's instruments in the world. To respond to the storm in a way that reflects the love and the mercy and the reconciling spirit of Jesus. Jesus calls us outside our doors to go into the world face the storm. But Jesus calls us to follow him, to come to him, to listen to that voice, to hear it and let it guide us out into the world. I've tried to figure out how that parallels all the things going on, uh, how we respond to COVID. I don't think that this is a call to, uh, to boldly go out in the world uh, and trust uh, that, that God will protect us. I think God uh, protects us with all of the instruments uh, of, uh, of, of science and wisdom. I don't think that this speaks clearly to how we respond to the events uh, in the news. Although I do think the church uh, is definitely, definitely uh, an important voice right now uh, in the world about us. I hear most clearly a call to make sure we're listening, that we're fixated on Jesus, that the storm uh, will continue to swirl around us, but that we understand that we are tethered to a God who will guide us through it, who will give us wisdom, who will give us direction, who comes to us in the middle of the storm. And even when we start to sink, even when we lose faith, even when we are fixated more on the storm than on Jesus, comes, lifts us up, and holds us closely. So I ask you, are you fixated on the storm and distracted by Jesus or fixated on Jesus and sometimes distracted on the storm? It's certainly a question that I need to be wrestling with. So maybe you do too. Amen. Good morning. I'm going to sing hymn 400, All Creatures of Our God and King.
Remember that life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who traveled away with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Our worship is now ended, and our service in the world begins. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.